This morning, a bombshell lawsuit with the potential to upend the NFL. The former head coach of the NFL's Miami Dolphins, Brian Flores, is accusing the league and multiple teams of systemic racial discrimination that is keeping black coaches from advancing in their careers. In this lawsuit, Flores and his attorneys called the league racially segregated and like a plantation, citing multiple interviews they say were a sham held just to meet the league's diversity rules and say this is why so few NFL coaches are black. The NFL denies these allegations. So joining us now is Brian Flores, former head coach of the Miami Dolphins, who is suing the NFL and his attorneys, Douglas Wigder and John Alefterakis. And coach, I appreciate you being with us. You know what a huge risk you're taking. There was a coach, not a coach, a lawyer quoted in the New York Times who said, I'm extremely surprised he would put his career in jeopardy. Does it feel like that to you? Well, I, I understand the risk. Um, look, I love coaching football. Uh, I'm called to coach football. I'm, I'm gifted to coach football. Um, and I still want to coach. Um, let's be clear about that. Uh, but this is bigger than coaching. This is bigger than me. Um, you know, look, uh, the, 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 the numbers speak for themselves as far as uh, the hiring, firing, um, and the lack of, of, of uh, opportunities for, for minority and black head coaches and executives in the National Football League. And, um, we, 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 we need to change. We need things to change. You know this could cost you your career. So why are you doing it? You know, like I mentioned before, um, this isn't about me. Um, um, and I, I understand that. This is, this is bigger than me. This is bigger than football. Um, many have, have come before um, and, and done a lot to create change in this country. Um, for, for people of color, um, and I just felt like, um, in this instance, um, you know, it was my turn to step up and, 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 and be an agent for change, and, and I'm, 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 uh, I'm proud to do that. This is not a new situation in the NFL. The NFL would not acknowledge, would acknowledge this is not a new situation. This is not a new situation in many ways for you. So what put you over the edge? Uh, my kids. Uh, that, that was a big part of this. You know, I look at I have two sons. They're, uh, you know, eight and seven. I've got a five-year-old daughter. Um, you know, when I look at them, I, I don't want them, want them to go through um, some of the things I've had to go through. Um, and I know that was the same for people who came before me as well. Um, they were thinking about me, even though I wasn't, you know, I, was, uh, I wasn't here yet. But, but that, that was a big thing. And then I just think of all the... Uh, coaches that, you know, even on my staff, I thought about guys on my staff or my previous staff in Miami who I know are, are more than capable, um, who have, who are gifted to coach in this league, to lead. Um, I just want them to have the, the, the opportunity to stand in front of a, 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 an owner and, and, and have a real opportunity um, to get one of those jobs and lead a team. You're, you're looking at a, a coach who is decorated. It's coming off two winning seasons. He's you know, obviously held in high regard throughout the league. And look at what he's had to go through. So for a normal coordinator or someone who hasn't been able to shine the way Brian has, I mean, he's going through this stuff. Can't imagine what they've had to go through. And that's part of what he's trying to break down and what we're trying to change. First back-to-back -back winning seasons for the Dolphins since, what, 2003? He won eight of the last nine games. Clearly a team that was on the rise, yet you got fired. I guess what I'm getting at is what was the, the straw that broke the camel's back? Was it this situation with the New York Giants? Yeah. I mean, that was it. Um, as you know, there was a, a series of text messages that led me to believe that um, I was going on an interview uh, for a job that uh, was already handed uh, to someone else. And look, uh, I'm all for um, you know, hiring the, the, the person you want to hire. Uh, I, I understand that. Um, and I think Brian Dable is a great coach. He's, a, he's, mm -hmm. he's someone I know I've worked with. He's a great coach um, and, 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 and definitely um, um, someone I respect. But, let, me, but, let, me, let me read through this exchange so people know exactly what we're talking about here. This was a text exchange you had with Bill Belichick, whom you worked with for years mm -hmm. at the New England Patriots. Coach Belichick writes you, sounds like you've landed. Congrats. You write back, did you hear something I didn't hear? Belichick writes, Giants, question mark? 
You write back, I interview on Thursday. I think I have a shot at it. Belichick writes, got it. I hear from Buffalo and the Giants that you are their guy. Hope it works out if you want to. Then you write, coach, are you talking to Brian Flores or Brian Dayball? Just making sure. Then Belichick writes, sorry, I effed this up. I double checked and I misread the text. I think they're naming Dayball. I'm sorry about that. Bill Belichick. So Belichick is telling you, days before you're even interviewing for the Giants job, that he thinks Dayball's got, got it locked up. Uh, yes, and that's, uh, that's, the, that's what we're trying to change. What did that feel like? Um, it was humiliating, um, to be quite honest. Uh, there was disbelief. There was anger. There was um, you know, a, a wave of emotions um, for a lot of reasons. Um, and I think this is, this is why, you know, we, we filed the lawsuit. And why uh, does Bill Belichick even, even know about who's getting the job? Why is he talking to the Giants and to the Bills? I mean, last I checked, he was with the Patriots. I mean, what's his involvement getting to, to, to know who's going to land the head coaching position? And so, you know, Brian's a really modest person. He's stepping up, he's mm -hmm. stepping up because, you know, this has been talked about for so long. There's only one black head coach. There are no black owners. There are very few offensive, defensive coordinators who are black. There are very few quarterback uh, coaches or special teams coaches who are black. And, and, and Brian is stepping up. We believe other people are going to follow, and we're going to proceed as a class action in this case. I'm going to get to the idea of will other people follow and are they following. And just so people know, 70% of the players in the NFL are black. 70%, and there's currently one black head coach, and it's a lower number than it was, what, 20 years ago. So the number's going down, not up, just so people know that. So Belichick tells you the job's going to Dayball, mm -hmm. a, a, a white coach. So you think at this point, what, the only reason the Giants are high, uh, interviewing me is because they have to? Yeah, uh, the, the Rooney rule. That, that's, you know, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Um, but, you know, it, it, my other emotions were, um, why aren't I getting an, a, a real opportunity here? Um, what did it feel like when you actually were sitting down for the interview with them after Belichick told you it was basically a done deal? Uh, I mean, were, I, again, another a wave of, waves of emotions for me. You know, is this real? Is this, um, um, am I wasting my time? But uh, look, I just put my best foot forward. That's what I've always done. Anytime I've dealt with a situation where I was dealing with adversity or, um, look, I've, 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 had a, I've, I've been a long shot my, my entire life, so I figured I'd put my best foot forward um, and interview to the best of my ability. Um, but there was also this sliver of hope that I had that, and I guess that's, you know, maybe I'm naive to the fact that of, of what's really, what really goes on um, in the, in the uh, behind the scenes. Did but there Belichick, was a sliver of hope. That, did that, did uh, Belichick know you were filing this lawsuit and going to make his text public? Uh, no, he did not. Have you talked to him since? I have not. Um, sliver of hope. And you've been through this, you say, in this lawsuit in a way before mm. with the Denver Broncos, where you say that you were asked to interview, but you were made to feel during the time that the interview was somehow not real. How so? Well, I show up to the interview. Um, I think it was an 8.30 a.m. interview. Um, they're late, which is unusual for, um, you know, this, this part of this, this process. Um, and look, I, I know I'm not alone in this where you, 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 you're the only, I believe I was the only, uh, minority interview. Um, and just the entire process doesn't feel like you're, you're an actual candidate. Um, and that's, that's unfortunate. The Rooney rule states that for head coach vacancies, they have to interview, what, at least two minority candidates. The numbers differ for the other jobs there. Um, but you felt that you were there as, as a number, that they weren't taking you seriously. They showed up late. You thought maybe they'd been drinking the night before. Just so people know, the Denver Broncos deny this. They say the allegations from Flores directed toward the Broncos in today's court filing are blatantly false. They say they showed up on time, et cetera. The Giants, I should have said as you were talking about them, they say we interviewed an impressive and diverse group of candidates. The fact of the matter is Brian was in the conversation to be our head coach until the 11th hour. Ultimately, we hired the individual we felt was most qualified to be our next head coach. Can I just say something about the Giants comment? Because I think yeah. it's interesting. You just read it. I mean, they don't deny that the job had already been uh, given to Brian Dable prior to the interview of, of, of Brian Flores. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, 
I think that that's Italian admission right there. Let me, and, and, we're, and we're talking about a mistaken text message, which we know these things happen. Brian's mm -hmm. been through it. But think about the fact that this is a mistaken text message from Bill Belichick. Otherwise, Brian would have been in there, you know, with the the understanding of, that there's a good chance he'd be treated as a Rooney Rule interview. But uh, he knew, and this was all uncovered from a mistake. And now it's out in the open. And Brian, with all the risk and and knowing that he's he's lending himself to a bigger cause, he's he's here to change what's been going on for the history of the NFL and and society at large.